Вітаємо! Ласкаво просимо, ми раді бачити вас сьогодні з нами разом. Hello and welcome to everyone. It's a great pleasure to have you with us today. My name is Katerina Bojchenko and along with my colleagues Katerina Juru and Stefania Aikonomo, we are thrilled to welcome you to today's webinar. It is with great honor and deep sense of responsibility that we welcome you all today to this vital webinar, a part of Agile project under the esteemed Erasmus Plus program. Today we stand together, albeit virtually, united by a common cause, to foster and discuss the role of education and social actions in support of those affected by the conflict in Ukraine. Today's session is unique because we are hosting nine representatives from outstanding um, Erasmus Plus and Solidarity Corps projects. These projects have been instrumental in offering support to Ukraine and its people, focusing on integration, education, and the well-being of refugees across Europe. Each story you will hear today is a testament to resilience and the power of community in the face of adversity. We are honored to have with us leaders who will share insights from their transformative projects that have not only changed lives, but also fostered a stronger sense of community. I'd like to introduce our exceptional team of facilitators who will guide for breakout sessions and ensure a productive and uh, engaging environment for all participants. From web to learn Greece, we have Katerina Juru, Stefania Economo, and myself, Katerina Bojchenko. Joining us are also Irina Dekterova from the Polish Rectors Foundation and Anna McKin from the Conflict and Environment Observatory in the United Kingdom. Each project leader will have a short presentation to highlight their initiatives. This will be followed by an interactive session with, uh, um, uh, with the breakout rooms where we can uh, engage more deeply our specific themes. Our goal today is not just to share, but to in inspire and explore how we can collectively enhance our efforts in supporting the Ukrainian community during these times. Now, it's my great pleasure to hand over the floor to Stefania Oikonomo, a research co collaborator from web to learn uh, Stefania has uh, been instrumental in steering our uh, projects towards impactful education and educational and social initiatives. Please, Stefania, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Katerina. Hi, everyone. I uh, would like also to welcome you in this Agile webinar we host together at web to learn And before giving the floor to our esteemed speakers, we thought it's great to go over uh, important EU Solidarity Actions and Initiatives for Ukraine. Uh, Katerina, next slide, if you can. Thank you. So uh, first of all, it's important to see how Ukraine has been embedded in uh, key EU uh, initiatives. Uh, an indicative and characteristic example, I would say, is the presence of Ukraine in the Erasmus Plus uh, uh, program. Uh, we can see it in the priorities of the program. We're addressing projects that uh, tackle the needs of Ukrainian people, Ukrainian refugees, but also people uh, in Ukraine is, is pivotal uh, for uh, new projects since the, uh, unfortunately, uh, the outbreak of the war uh, two years now. Next uh, slide, Katerina. Thank you. So 
Another important initiative by the European Commission is this uh, web page where Ukrainian people can uh, have access to practical information about uh, how to uh, navigate the complex landscape of European bureaucracy, but also how to uh, navigate safely in Europe and how what are the measures uh, that have been uh, developed to support them and welcome them in, in the European uh, uh, Union. Of course, you can see all assistance measures in the website, and uh, this website is also available in Ukrainian language. And here I would also like to remind our participants that we have a live uh, interpretation in Ukrainian. You can check this option on the Zoom uh, panel in your Zoom screen. And next slide, Katerina, a uh, final one, I think. Uh, about European initiatives. Thank you. So as we're talking about education and higher education in particular, we thought that it's important also to highlight key European initiatives for supporting Ukrainian scholars, Ukrainian researchers and higher education students. You can see here indicatively the European Research Area for Ukraine, a new initiative set up uh, focusing exclusively on the needs of Ukrainian scholars. Uh, you can see also the establishment of the new Ukrainian school hub that gathers very important resources and information for Ukrainian people. Um, of course, the European University Alliance uh, promotes initiatives and actions for Ukrainian universities, Ukrainian scholars, and they have set up a dedicated page for these kind of actions in their website. And finally, uh, another important uh, Financial support also to Ukrainian scholars are the Marie Curie scholarships uh, with a dedicated scholarship for Ukraine. So Marie Curie for Ukraine scholarships. Thank you, Katerina, over to you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Stefania. Uh, we will move forward. So uh, Stefania represents also the Agile project fostering higher education resilience in uh, refugee crisis through capacity building, civic engagement and skills recognition. Uh, Stefania based in Greece with web to learn uh, is at the uh, far front uh, of promoting uh, social inclusion and educational reform. Thank you, so, Katarina. Uh, hi again as well, everyone. I'm very happy to represent today the Agile Project, a project that has been ideated by Katerina Zuru from web to learn in collaboration with our partners at University Paris 8. Katerina, if you may uh, move on to the next slide. So Agile is an Erasmus Plus K KA2 project uh, started in December 2022. Our goal here is to uh, foster uh, the smooth integration of refugee students in European higher education systems. And by addressing refugee students, we also include Ukrainian uh, refugees who are uh, trying to uh, integrate in uh, European universities. Of course, we are looking at building capacity also at uh, European institutions, European universities, becoming more resilient in times of crisis. And we do so through social actions and through skills recognition. Uh, as I said, the project is coordinated by University Paris 8, and we are very happy to collaborate with seven more partners in this project. So we have University Bordeaux Montaigne, we have University of Ljubljana, Polish Rectors Foundation, uh, the Ukrainian University Lviv in Lviv Polytechnic, uh, University of Hamburg, and of course, Kaunas University. And one more slide about some of the key results we have built so far. Uh, it's important to highlight that uh, we have organized five round tables with uh, higher education students and teachers. Um, partners, university partners have distributed more than uh, a survey to more than 100 higher education students. So through the surveys, we are trying to understand the needs and challenges of students and educators, uh, refugee students in, in uh, integrating and welcoming in this uh, new environment. And of course, uh, we have four publications already available on the Agile website. You can scan the code here and uh, uh, check all our open access publications. Indicatively to say the first one is about European universities tackling the Ukrainian refugee crisis, a publication uh, from Web2Learn looking into grassroots actions from the academic community 
to Ukrainian refugees, of course, another landscape analysis of higher education crisis support mechanisms that summarizes key uh, insights from the surveys uh, generated and the discussions of the project. You can all check all these through our website and I welcome you to go through it. Thank you again, Katerina. Thank you so much, Stefania, for your presentation and move we move to our esteemed speaker, Marika Oyala, from Finland's basic education <clears throat> at uh, Sinayoki. Coordin she coordinates the Responsible Future Learners project. This initiative has successfully uh, organized the summer club for Ukrainian students, blending education with cultural exchange, to foster inclusivity and learning. Uh, please, Marika, the floor is yours. Thank you, Katerina. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you very well. Great, thank you. So, hello everyone and greetings from Finland, Seinäjoki. Um, uh, we have actually uh, taken part in this Erasmus program, Responsible Future Learners, uh, already before COVID. So our story goes beyond COVID time. And we had this uh, project going on in Martilan Koulu, which is a primary school here in Seinäjoki. And the project was about active citizenship and different tools and skills that the children needed for, for becoming active citizens. And then uh, the Ukrainian situation started uh, during spring 22. And uh, suddenly during March and April, we re received quite many uh, Ukrainian children in our school. And, uh, we were able to enroll the children uh, already, like right away after their arrival to Finland. They could start school uh, in Martila school, the same school uh, at, at the very moment when they arrived to Finland. And we thought that it's best to have a safe and sound environment for the children and start learning little by little in the Finnish school system. So we had a preparatory teaching, uh, which also taught them uh, Finnish, but also Ukrainian language and math and all the other subjects uh, all of a sudden quickly. And then we, uh, we remembered that we had this Erasmus project and our national agency had stated that uh, or recommended that it would be really a positive thing to benefit the Ukrainian children and uh, the situation with the project funding. So we requested from our national agency whether we could use some of the project funding for this kind of um, activities that wasn't uh, included originally in our project plan, but was, was really suitable for the topic. Uh, and um, they were really excited about that. So we organized this club because uh, it's also really important for the children that they can learn some some Finnish language when they are here with us in Finland. So it was about in, um, ensuring their language learning and also uh, once again offering a safe uh, environment and activities for today. So that was kind of the background for this. And we can check the next slide. So there were many different kinds of activities we hired two uh, Finnish-speaking teacher, teachers and, uh, and an instructor that was Ukrainian and she was sp speaking Ukrainian with the children. So we had a, 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 like a three weeks extra activity for the kids. So we, we found that really pleasant and, and heartwarming and the experience was very nice for the children and also the, the staff was really um, overwhelmed by the by the uh, results of, of, of those weeks. So everybody was really happy about this. So that was uh, our experience in short. And then, of course, when the children were enrolled in the same school and the, the project went on with the actual activities, it was, it was then another continuum for that. But this was kind of a specific uh, thing that we used the project funding for. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for your presentation. And we move on to our next uh, speaker, uh, Sigita Korolova with Lithuania's Klaipeda uh, Litorina School. Uh, she directs a transformative initiative using art therapy to help special education students overcome obstacles. So Sigita, the floor is yours. Oh, I'm sorry. Good day. Today, I would like to share the impact of the KA229 project student with special educational needs, <laughs> picture of uh, educational needs, overcome barriers through art therapy on the integration and socialization of Ukrainian children. You can read the main goal of the project on the screen. Art therapy is one of the most rewarded methods to help not only people with special educational needs, but also anyone who needs help to integrate into society, to cope with psychology, the psychological, social, and cognitive difficulties. Six involved countries have chosen a method that they have mastered in their schools and can share with others. The experience gained during the project allowed us to create a therapeutic environment for the Ukrainians, which we tested for the first time on the 4th of March, 2022. When I saw on the internet an invitation to join an international initiative to provide distance learning workshops for Ukrainian children, I invited my students to join in. Next slide, please. We came up with a game called Let's Create a Fairy Tale Together, uh, incorporating elements of fairy tales and art therapies that can help to release the anxiety and fear that has built up. The young children who joined the activities were scared at, and shy at first, but the fairy tale game relaxed them and engaged them in heartfelt conversations. And when the deaf children on the right side from Ukraine came to our school on the 15th of March, 2022, I knew that art therapy would help me to include them in the Lithuanian community. Since I only have two minutes, I suggest, click please, I suggest you visit our project website and find out what a great impact our therapy has won everyone. Thank you for attention. Thank you so much for your insightful presentation. And we move to our next speaker, Alice Vitola, who represents Creative Ideas Latvia with the project United in Culture Welcoming Ukrainian Refugees. Please, Alice, uh, the floor is yours. Dear colleagues, we are very happy to be here. Uh, me and my colleague, Sanita Putnina, who was the project manager of this particular project. So um, we, we started working on this uh, idea when we realized that the Ukrainian refugees uh, will be started actually coming to Latvia already in February and March. And um, so we quickly created a project together with our partners in Poland, Green Elephant Foundation. Next slide, please. Uh, what we did, we wrote a small partnership project in the Erasmus program uh, in which we included the following activities, Latvian and Polish language courses, because based on our previous experience working with uh, migrants living in Latvia and also in Poland, we of course knew that language courses are very crucial for integration of people, even if they come to live for a uh, short time in Latvia. Anyway, it's useful to, to get to know some local language. Also, we, we foresaw several creative workshops, visits to museums, cultural events, and also we did uh, several joint celebrations of festivities. So there were different activities taking place in Latvia and in Poland. And that was also, I, I think, beneficial for our project that we used a bit different approaches. So in Latvia, we had two big, uh, large language courses, each 120 hours. Uh, it means that the participants could uh, get one level up uh, in their Latvian language skills. And in Poland, they, they did a bit different approach. They did the se seven smaller 
uh, language courses and also for adults and uh, children. Uh, and then uh, we also, um, in Latvia, we, we did uh, several um, events, so excursions in the Riga, to visits to different museums in Riga. And also we did, yeah, as I mentioned before, joint celebrations, for example, of Christmas, where we showed Latvian traditions and then Ukrainians taking part in our events, they showed us Ukrainian traditions. So we did also mutual exchange of our cultures and got to know each other better. Next slide, please. So in terms of results of the project, what we did, uh, we we did uh, achieve much more than we initially planned in the project. We planned two language courses. We actually did nine, so all together in Latvia and Poland. We had planned for 400 hours of different activities, but thanks to enthusiasm of uh, our participants, uh, at the end, we did twice as much, actually 850 hours of different activities. And here I want to also mention that in Pol Poland, uh, there was a very good solution by our colleagues. They collaborated with local Ukrainian organizations that had been already founded in Poland. Uh, involved them as well. So Ukrainians organized quite a few activities uh, for their own community. And uh, more than 300 people, adults and children at the end were involved in the project. And as for the sustainability of our collaboration, I can already mention that we have expanded our networks. We have new organizations now that we are writing together new proposals and implementing new activities for uh, Uk Ukrainians living in Latvia and Poland. Thank you very much for your attention. It's very interesting to see what other organizations are doing and perhaps we can do also some networking here today. Thank you so much, Alice, for your experience, for sharing your experience. And we move to the next speaker. <laughs> I'm sorry, Alana Kuratova from Slovakia's uh, ICANN organization. She runs the Slovak for Children uh, of Foreigners project, uh, an essential educational initiative providing Slovak language skills to refugees' children, facilitating smoother integration into new environments. Uh, please, Alona, the floor is yours. Thank you, Katerina. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Aloma, and I'm an administrator of AK Foundation and CEO of uh, ICANN Language School. We have projects from Slovakia which boosting integration through, through Slovak language learning. Since the beginning of the war, we have already helped more than 20,000 uh, Ukrainian children. Project won a uh, European label of languages uh, and uh, was, um, uh, was uh, one of 15 ex inspirational projects of EU solidarity with Ukraine. I was born in Crimea and I has uh, Ukrainian soil and mentality, but for 20 years I, I have uh, lived in Slovakia. In 2014, some, something broke in me and I began to devote myself more to helping uh, people through AK Foundation. It was in this year's, in, in this year, in my opinion, that we, the war uh, began. Uh, but not 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 everyone noticed it. Uh, in AK uh, Foundation, we helped young people from the Lugansk and Donetsk uh, region and uh, the Crimea to get uh, higher education in Slovakia, help them learn uh, the Slovak language and integrate. In 2016, uh, I opened the ICANN Language School, which began to provide uh, this service and integrate them through language. Uh, we open a uh, school because uh, we don't we don't find a quality language school for foreigners on the market, and the uh, other school, in my opinion, poorly integrated children and adolescents in Slovakia. I think integration uh, or inclusion is win-win situation. Thank you for this slide. It is our textbooks uh, which we wrote in cooperation with the National Institute of Education and Yos uh, Nivam uh, in Slovak Republic and uh, Slovak compatriots organization in the world. Interesting that in uh, February 2022, it was finished. Uh, in May 2023, the education ministry officially recognized the textbooks 
that uh, teach Slovak uh, as a foreign language. We wrote uh, seven books, uh, each of them focusing on different age group of children and different language levels from five until 15 uh, years old. Uh, second, uh, next slide, please. Unfortunately, we don't have a Slovakia in Slovakia compulsory education for uh, Ukrainian kids. That's why uh, that's why we had less than half of kids out of the school system. Uh, we have uh, a lot of work in the future, I think, um, and we continue with preparing uh, preparing uh, met methodics for teachers and dig digitalization of our teaching materials, because uh, I think that uh, kids uh, have to be in the school, which is the best social environment for them. Thank you. It is all information from my side. Thank you so much, Alona. And we move to our next speaker, um, Anastasia Mazur uh, of uh, the My Madeira Island Association, Portugal. Uh, she leads Youth Media Sharks. Alona, uh, I'm sorry, Anastasia, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, pleasure to meet you. Thank you so much for inviting us and uh, congratulations uh, to all the projects that have been presented so far. Wow, so much inspiration. So I'm here to speak about our project uh, that is called uh, Youth Media Sharks Media Literacy Upskilling. It was a partnership between two organizations, ours, uh, Association of My Mother Island from Portugal, and uh, an association that is called Center for Euro Initiatives uh, from the city of Sumy in Ukraine. Uh, I myself uh, am Ukrainian, coming from initially from that organization, but uh, I've been living in Portugal for uh, more than eight years, but we, of course, uh, keep in touch and uh, develop various initiatives together. Uh, the idea of this project was media literacy and critical thinking for young people, but it started at the end of COVID. So initially, the idea of the project was to work against the fakes connected to the pandemic. However, uh, when the war started, we realized that we cannot be speaking with a serious face about COVID when we have war in Europe. So we connected the national agency and asked if we can uh, change the topics of the project uh, uh, and direct them all to info wars and the humanitarian and economic and social crisis in Europe because that would make project more important and more imp impactful. And of course, they said, OK, as long as you're keeping the main objectives, uh, please go ahead. And I think this made this project uh, quite successful and very relevant for young people, both in Ukraine and Portugal and uh, in other countries that received our materials. OK, can we move to the next slide, please? So just briefly to explain what we were doing. First, we organized uh, media literacy workshops uh, in both countries uh, where young people spoke about fake, spoke about what is opinion, what is uh, fact, and so on. And then they made research on local media, local, uh, regional, and national media as well regarding these topics and saw with their own eyes and with the new knowledge if the standards are actually uh, responding to the high level of journalism, the journalism ethics and so on, and also what is presented in social media. And then they uh, came up with uh, suggestions to the local decision makers regarding uh, their impact and also the importance of including media literacy training in the university and school curriculum, because in some European countries it is included, but in some it is not. And then we uh, held an international uh, youth exchange here in Madeira where Ukrainian participants joined us. And after that, developed, they developed a promo campaign in an attractive colors and memes for young people to raise awareness about the importance of critical thinking and media literacy. And it's important to speak about the uh, perception of Ukrainian participants when they came here to Portugal. They said, OK, so we heard from news, from TV, that Europe is actually supporting us, the politicians and so on. But it was very much eye-opening for them to hear it from just people on the street, from people at the schools, from, from local youngsters, that they do actually support Ukraine a lot and show so much solidarity. And it was so heartwarming for them. And it was a great boost of power of um, hope for Ukrainians. So we are like very, we're very, very happy about this project. 
Thank you so much for, for your uh, presentation. And we move to our next speaker, Duret Maiste from Estonia's University of Tartu. She manages uh, the project that enables medical students from Ukraine to continue their studies. Uh, Duret, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Birat and I work as Student Exchange Coordinator at the University of Tartu. And I'm going to briefly tell you about our project uh, that was targeted for medical students coming from Ukraine. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Uh, so uh, the aim of the project was uh, we, we created a special program for Ukrainian medical students that enabled them to continue their studies at the University of Tartu. Uh, in Estonian language. Um, and the program was designed so that the first year was an intensive Estonian language course. So they started from zero level, and by the end of the academic year, the goal was to achieve level B2 in Estonian language. And, and uh, uh, they first year, they studied as exchange students, and they received Erasmus grant to support the studies and cover their living costs. And by the end of the year, uh, they almost all achieved required language test and they uh, passed the test uh, successfully. And uh, so starting from this year, they are now studying as degree seeking students and uh, in the Faculty of Medicine and they continue their studies. Six of them are in uh, medicine and two are in dentistry. And uh, they're currently on their second or third year, depending on how far they were with their studies uh, in Ukraine. And in addition to this, uh, next slide, slide please. Uh, in addition to this uh, group of medical students, we have actually admitted uh, lots of Ukrainian exchange students, uh, uh, thanks to the uh, Ukrainian flexibility in Erasmus program. And so altogether, starting from uh, spring 2022, we have hosted almost 130 exchange students uh, from Ukraine and within Erasmus plus Europe and also within international credit mobility programs. And we, do, we continue to host uh, exchange students from our partner universities within Erasmus plus also next uh, academic year. So thank you. This was very briefly from me. Thank you so much, Pirette, for your insightful presentation. And we move on to our next speakers, uh, Jana Neva and Sofia Alves from Cruz Valmerja, Portuguesa. Um, their project cultivates a vibrant community network through culture and social activities, enriching the lives of Ukrainians, uh, of refugees, and local residents alike. So the floor is yours. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Sofia Alves, and today I'm presenting the project We Are Neighbors. And we developed this project at the Portuguese Red Cross, the local youth branch in the city of Braga. Can you please press the, the slide? Thank you. So we decided to um, we decided to um, to develop this project uh, during the year of 2023, starting in October, and we decided to organize a series of activities, cultural, gastronomic, historical exchanges, uh, not only with uh, Ukrainian refugee families, but also together with the citizens of Braga. Uh, can you please pass the slide? Uh, so thanks to this project, we reunited six different families, mostly mothers, but also a lot of children, some some fathers, and I think we also had one grandmother. We were also able to reunite 16 volunteers, 24 beneficiaries, and we did in total uh, 13 group events each month. Uh, we had one group event. However, on the last month, we had two events. Besides this, we had uh, we had this uh, dynamic called uh, connection agents, 
this was a pairing of two of our volunteers who are responsible for one family and they were responsible to meet them either weekly or bi-weekly and they would meet our families and either do home visits or visits to the park, playroom, libraries, uh, go to pedagogical farms or even attend traditional events in the city of Braga. Uh, please pass the slide. So here are some of the picture, two pictures we took uh, during the events. We decided also to take into consideration which events would not only be um, not only be considered, let's say, Portuguese, but also taking into consideration what would be traditional or traditionally Ukrainian. Uh, so oftentimes the families would also bring a Ukrainian food and their own traditions. So it would be uh, also a cultural exchange. In these two pictures, in the first one, you can see like, uh, it was our first one, it was a Christmas celebration. And in the second one, it was a celebration for Earth Day. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Sophia, for your presentation and insightful project, We Are Neighbors. And we move on to our next speaker. But today I have the honor of presenting on behalf of Carmen Con Constantinescu from the Blacking Institute of Technology, who unfortunately couldn't join us to, uh, due to health reasons and uh, we wish her a speedy recovery. So our focus is on an inspiring project titled uh, Empowering Ukrainian Students Through Double Degree Programs. This initiative aimed to support Ukrainian students whose education has been disrupted uh, by the ongoing conflict in their homeland. And uh, thanks to the Erasmus Plus International Credit Mobility Funds, the students were able to pursue a double degree receiving a master in computer science from uh, BTH and a master, of, uh, master in uh, cybersecurity uh, from um, their home university. And this arrangement not only ensured their academic uh, progression, but also provided a stable and supportive uh, environment away from the uh, from their home, and also uh, the program Carmen and her team uh, at the BTH have gone above uh, and beyond the, uh, to assist these students academically and personally, and the effort of uh, the effort to integrate and support these students has been immense and truly embodies the values of compassion, resilience, uh, and academic evidence. As we draw this uh, lightning session to a close, I want to extend my deepest gratitude to each of you for joining us today. And today we heard from the remarkable representatives who shared their experiences and outcomes from various projects across Europe. And these stories are not just tales of challenges, they are testimonies of resilience, cooperation, and the human spirit. And they remind us that uh, through solidarity, we can build bridges and create environments where education thrives and communities uh, heal. And uh, please stay tuned for our upcoming events and publications. Check our website and subscribe to, subscribe to our social media. Once again, thank you all for your active participation and for the insightful uh, discussions. Together, we are not just witnesses to change, uh, we are the drivers of it. And thank you for your commitment to uh, standing with Ukraine. Let us continue to work together, learn from each other, and build a future where education and solidarity uh, lead the way to recovery and peace.